If you've heard a doctor say that peptides don't work orally, what they're really saying is that they haven't read any of the transporter data, the gut peptide literature, or even basic biochemistry in the last 20 years. Because if oral peptides didn't work, then lorazotide, which inhibits a protein called zonulin in the intestines, wouldn't be able to fix leaky gut. KPV, a fragment from alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, wouldn't even be able to reach the intestine to reduce inflammatory cytokines and modulate the immune system. Collagen peptides wouldn't be able to reduce joint pain in clinical studies, and carnosine and answerine, which are dye peptides contained within meat, wouldn't be able to improve cognition and performance and kidneys and heart and glucose control when taken by mouth in human studies. Yet all of that is documented. And in the case of answerine being ingested orally by humans, we can even see the blood plasma levels increase. So if any of these experts are saying that peptides don't work orally, then clearly they are not reading the peptide literature. Now, before somebody chimes in and tells me that I'm wrong about all of this, I understand there are nuances to this. It's not black and white. Not all peptides work orally. Of course, it depends on the peptide structure, which determines how well it can either resist gastric acid or get broken down by it, and proteolytic enzymes, whose job it is to actually break down certain peptides, and also whether or not a peptide can transport rapidly through transporters known as Latin pept in your stomach and intestines, respectively. It all depends on the peptide structure, including its size. So when someone says small peptides can't be absorbed, they're basically announcing that they don't understand LAT and PEPT biology whatsoever. There was a great study by Professor Covinson's team who did molecular modeling on 26 ultra-short bioregulatory peptides. They docked them against LAT and PEPT transporters. They compared them against several thousand other dye and tripeptides in the literature. And what they found was that most of them had poor affinity. So even a lot of small peptides don't get uptaken easily. However, these 26 peptides showed very strong binding to these transporters. Now the next claim is that stomach acid destroys all these peptides so that nothing survives. This is just false. While some peptides do get broken down by stomach acid and peptidases, and including small peptides, by the way, like thymogen, which is just two amino acids long, and even somewhat with carnosine, another dipeptide that's broken down by carnosinase, there are others like answerine, which is a dipeptide like carnosine, but with a methylated structure are able to resist the breakdown so well that their increase is actually detectable in human plasma after injection. And by the way, someone commented recently about how our channel isn't that popular. Yeah, sure, we don't have the largest microphone in the world. And honestly, I actually hate making these videos. I just get so annoyed when I have to cover more misinformation out there, and I'm just not very passionate about covering it. But most of my time is also spent actually helping clients and building courses and writing books. So if you want to learn more about how to dose peptides, including which ones can be used orally, injected, or even intranasally, then the next step for you is to get Peptide Salvation. It is the largest and most scientifically accurate peptide book ever written, and it covers 112 peptides. Now, if you want our citation list, this covers 1,100 scientific studies for our book and our flagship course, Peptide Mastery. And I recommend that you check that out if you're interested in scientific proof and accuracy. And this has been Brendan Henry. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative. Uh, if you hear any peptide influencers out there claiming that peptides just do not work orally without providing any nuances to their explanation, then I suggest you don't listen to anything else they say because it's probably going to be misinformation and demonstrates a clear misunderstanding and lack of understanding, really, on how peptides actually work. So, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and thank you for watching.